hello. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. How are you doing? Do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Hi there, everyone. I'm Scott Peters. I'm a undergraduate researcher of uh, communications and political communications at Southern Methodist University. I'm doing research on sort of uh, the debate lords, you, De uh, Hassan, uh, Bosch, um, mostly the online debate and politics community, and I'm learning everything about it and going to report on it. Cool. Um, and then, so this is for some, um, I imagine, for one of your classes or something? Yeah, it's for my political communication class. Uh, okay. it's, it's a rad time there. Okay, cool. Well, what do you got for us? What are your questions? Um, so how did you gain your following as a content creator? Um, initially, it was through gaming and streaming. Um, and you've transitioned uh, from also gaming to also doing sort of politics content as well. Yeah, politics and philosophy, I guess. Yeah, it's like my main. How did, how did that come about? Did you just start doing politics streams one day? Did your uh, fans for it or something? Um, I've always kind of done a variety of content. Like I've never done just gaming. Like we've always talked about, like at least like current events or stuff like that. Um, and then so when the 2016 election season rolled around, we like pretty naturally kind of um, motion, moved more into like a political or philosophical content, I guess, became more of a mainstay of the stream. Um, and so when you post like videos to YouTube and stuff, do you uh, often edit them? I don't. I have people that do, though, or they're supposed to oh, at least. Okay. Um, and so largely a lot of your content is in the live medium on the live streams and it's off the hash, you know, live raw content. Yeah, generally, yeah. The vast majority, uh, almost all my content, yeah. What benefits are there to, to the live medium over prepared content and what do you see the, uh, the drawbacks? Uh, biggest benefit is way easier to produce. Um, far less time goes into prep or editing or re things related to production. Like you typically, you just have a thing and you go. Um, so that's like the first big uh, advantage. And then the um, the second advantage is that um, you can produce like, it's kind of all re really the first second advantage is that you can produce a lot of it. So like I can do like eight to nine hours of like live content every day or 10 or 11 hours of live content every day. You can't really do the same with produced content. And then third is that it's interactive. Um, so you, you can kind of interact with YouTube content, like, hey, guys, um, like and comment with things you want me to see in the future or, you know, write your response below. But it, it's the, the two-way interaction with streaming is highly unique in the media world. Um, like, I don't think it's emulated anywhere else. So being able to do stuff live while interacting with the chat um, and doing it for a lot of hours are all, like, pretty at low cost or, like, the unique arguments in favor of doing live things versus uh, pre-produced things. That's from a business point of view. From like a di from like a political point of view, um, one of the benefits is that it's easy to find out how a person constructs arguments or to test the depths of a person's arguments in real time uh, because they have less time to prepare a response for it. So you can very quickly find out like, is this a reasonable person? Do they put thoughts together in a coherent manner, or are they kind of like making shit up? Or you know, they spend a lot of time preparing because they don't actually know much about what they're talking about. Um, in being on the live content, do you feel like uh, people who view you live have are, are more engaged with you as, as a personality on the internet? What do you mean more engaged with me as a personality? Rather than say you, you view a YouTuber who makes prepared content, mm -hmm. you're talking with people live. You're often in with the chat, answering questions. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there's more of a relationship there there's at yeah. least something unique because of the two-way nature of it yeah for sure there's a, a more more of a relationship there yeah it's almost parasocial but not i guess i mean i would say it's definitely parasocial i mean it can be or it grows to that pretty easily in this world i would say right right at where you you might have live uh contact with your viewers you i mean obviously you, you don't know them as people like in the same way um but, uh, sometimes i mean personally i do um i think i have a pretty unique relationship with my audience on twitch i don't know how many other people do it in exactly the same that, way that i do it but i mean like i play games with a lot of them i talk to a lot of them like i i know a lot of my chatters um that i think that's relatively unique in this world so i, I don't want to say that's the norm or anything but yeah um how long do you typically stream for and how do you ever find yourself streaming for a long period of times and that being difficult 
Um, I try to stream for 10 hours a day is my schedule, and streaming for long times is never difficult for me. I really enjoy it, so. All right. Um, what's a streamer's relationship with copyright and streaming services like? Um, tenuous? Is that the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Hold on. Um, you kind of just do what you can get away with and hope that nobody gets you for anything, but like all of that world is very iffy nobody really knows what the rules are right now so people just kind of like test the boundaries all day right like theoretically uh, like even playing music on stream is probably a violation of copyright um both in letter of the law and spirit of the law maybe but um there are people that literally just watch full episodes of like reality tv and shit on stream these days and they don't really get in trouble for it so nobody really knows like what the hmm. boundaries are all right Walk me through what it's like to prepare for a stream. I mean, through the technical side, um, do you ever like pick out stories to talk about specifically? Um, yeah, well, I don't like usually come to stream with like, these are the stories I'm going to tell today, if that's what you're asking. Um, right. But I mean, like, depending on the given topic, I mean, yeah, there are definitely some stories that might be relevant that we might talk about or use to il illustrate some points or whatever, but I don't usually prepare stuff like that in advance. Unless there's like a like a big debate coming up that I'm like especially preparing for. Hmm. Um, what could be improved about the current culture of politics streams? Um, I mean, I don't think anything could be improved that isn't already like kind of like the story of politics in general in America. Um, I mean, like, I could give a bunch of broad critiques. Like, I wish people were more fact-based with their arguments. I wish people were less emotional. I wish people were less partisan or ideologically driven. But, I mean, these are things that are common across all political platforms uh, across the entire world. So any, like, very pointed critique I give of politics on Twitch would also be applied more broadly to, like, politics as a whole, you know? So, I mean... I, I understand uh, removing emotions from political arguments, but... Do you see that uh, some creators will, can grow through their political or through their emotional reactions um, to their arguments? Yeah, of course you could. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, displaying emotions like that is an easy way to get to convince people one that you really care about an issue, and then two to get people over to your side because if they see somebody being more emotional about a given topic, they might think that that person um, cares more about said topic or something. All right. Um, besides that, that's all the questions I have right now. Okay. If you have any more wisdom that you think you could uh, share with me. Um, not really. I mean, what's the topic of your paper? It's really just an in-depth exploration. I don't really have a central thesis right now. Um, I guess I'm, I'm just trying to evaluate what this community is like and how, what the future of this could be like i don't know maybe we see you know, a few years down the line perhaps it's like i don't know cnn uh promotes their own sort of streaming uh personality mm -hmm. um that competes with uh you guys in this sort of niche culture huh i well, can okay. see that happening um but yeah uh it's been great yeah well good luck man all right thank you bye okay that was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, so I mean, like, obviously, I like I, I completely disagree with you, but I, I understand with what you're saying, right? So, like, my, my, so my, my statement would be, like,